Good morning, everybody. Um, Pro Vice Chancellor, thank you so much for the kind introduction, for the invitation, for an extraordinary week. Um, you guys have uh, done the incredible. And before I start, I want to give a big thank you to uh, Vice Chancellor Greer and a huge congratulations for an incredible couple days. As a former member of the U.S. House of Representatives, I have some idea about the challenges of coordinating the desires, needs, hopes, aspirations, crazy thoughts of any politician. And folks, it is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, you decided to do that with, by my current count, two current prime ministers, three former heads of state, a secretary of state, a president, a vice president, countless ambassadors, party leaders, members of parliament from multiple countries, regions, civil society, and an audience. <laughs> Bravo and well done. I also want to take a quick second and just thank all the incredible men and women on your team who made it happen. Uh, Ryan Feeney got a shout out a little while ago, but I want to give him another one. He actually ran a dedicated hotline to our consulate to help manage our entire moving parts, which also is not always for the faint of heart. Uh, Ryan, God bless you, Godspeed. I have been told you have the rest of the week off. Um, <laughs> And the same goes to our incredible Consul General, Paul Narain. Paul, your team has been incredible. Um, you have run me ragged, my friend. Um, and um, for those of you that uh, I've been here for about 10 days or so, my wife and family came in. We all moved in with Paul. So for those of you that think you've had a long week, he gets to go home to an entire another family with two little kids running around and uh, destroying everything that the U.S. government put inside the consulate. So <laughs> thank you. And to Stephanie as well. Thank you both. <laughs> and one last indulgence. Um, don't let the grace of Jane, Jane Brady fool any of you. She is tireless, she is tenacious, and she is absolutely amazing. Um, Jane, you and your team have been incredible partners uh, to me as I try to get my feet underneath me here. Um, it has been a privilege to get to know you, uh, to get to work with you, and I am incredibly excited about the work that you and we can do together. So, thank you. A final note of gratitude to the people of Northern Ireland for the extraordinarily warm welcome that you have extended to me and my family this past week. Lauren and our kids have had an incredible time with you, and you could not have been more friendly, more gracious, and more kind. And that started after 10 p.m. last Tuesday night in the rain with the crowds that were lining the street to meet President Biden last Sunday at Clonard Monastery, an extraordinary uh, exhibition by the choir. The students here at Queens and the entrepreneurs we visited at Catalyst. The shopkeepers we helped support in Derry, London Derry. To the crew that made the biggest ice cream sundaes my kids ever seen and devoured after crossing that rope bridge in Carrick Arreen, we have had an extraordinary visit. To all of you, thank you. You have also kept us busy with one remarkable adventure after the next. I went on a boat that has a takeoff button on the steering wheel that when you press it, it literally launches into the air and moves around on a hydrofoil. We cruised around Belfast Harbor at a smooth 30 knots, a place that was once the shipbuilding center of the world. I walked through a factory floor at Seagate in Derry and Londonderry, trying in vain to understand how you can it fix a laser to something the size of an atom. I still don't get it. <laughs> but thankfully, they do. And a third of all the computers in the world have parts that come through a Seagate factory. Nearly half of those come from that factory. A few minutes later, I was walking across walls 
that are over 400 years old on my way to a peace bridge. I walked through an old bathhouse from the 1700s, and there were two bathtubs in the lobby. I thought it was an interesting look for a spa. I turned the corner, and I met an Oscar winner. I turned around, and I saw a young man wearing a virtual reality headset, trying to stop Lionel Messi from scoring yet another goal. Well, I think Messi probably got the best of him. That young man was creating a video game that helps get people up and keeps them active to improve their health. There are a few places on this planet where the connection between the past and the present is so tangible. And I can only imagine how complicated and at times how difficult that must be. But there is a difference between being guided by the past and being held hostage by it. One can and should be proud to recognize the achievements that have been made while seeing there's a journey still ahead. And that is a balance that Northern Ireland navigates today, though it has never been easy, though you have sacrificed greatly. As Senator Mitchell said from this podium, this week we honor 25 years of an agreement by and for the people of Northern Ireland. It's your agreement. It is your home. It is your future. It is your journey. But know that I and so many others are excited to come along with you as you embark on this next chapter. Many have remarked this past week that there can be no prosperity without peace. President Biden, as you all heard, agrees. And he believes in the people of Northern Ireland. He asked me to assist in championing your cause and your case. And luckily for me, it's a pretty easy case to make. There's over 230 American businesses that now thrive in Northern Ireland, employ over 30,000 people. The United States is Northern Ireland's largest source of market value for foreign direct investment, predominantly in high value sectors. And over the last decade, political stability has drawn almost $2 billion in new investment from the United States alone. Today, Northern Ireland has one of the highest concentrations of cybersecurity employment in Europe because it is a top investment location for U.S. firms in the field. They are here, folks, because you are here. The talent, the people, the community, the possibility, and the future. Firms like Citi and Seagate could be anywhere. They chose to be here. They chose Northern Ireland. They chose you. Two of my primary responsibilities will be trying to get those firms that are already here to expand their footprint. And, of course, to make the case to the next set of global partners about why they should come here. Perhaps not surprisingly, many executives are already aware of the case for Northern Ireland. They know about the talent, they know about the ease of transit. They know about the potential for market access. They also, yes, want clarity and certainty. They want to have a good idea of what might change and how and when that might happen. The sooner they have answers to those questions, the better for a Northern Ireland economy. But there also can be no prosperity without peace. And there can be no peace without prosperity. Indeed, it was in fact an Englishman who inspired American revolutionaries to codify that unalienable truth in our Declaration of Independence. That each of us was endowed not only with the right to life and liberty, but the right to pursue our happiness. A radical notion 
still today, perhaps, when you stop and actually think about it. But in Locke's framing, that happiness meant that each of us was entitled to a path where our own basic needs would be met. In the 250 years since, America has wrestled mightily with that responsibility. I am incredibly proud of my country. But I am not blind to the places where our promises have fallen short. For while we lead the world in scientific discovery and innovation, we struggle to make good on that commitment to protect the basic dignity of every person who calls America home. My hometown of Boston, we like to call the cradle of our revolution, is also mentioned as a global hub of technology, innovation, and life sciences. And I think that's true. We're proud of it. But a friend also recently mentioned to me her old bus route. She'd hop on the number one bus in Harvard Square, past towering bookstores, sparkling theaters, through the sprawling MIT campus and over the Charles River, speckled with sailboats. She'd cut across the Tony Brownstones of the Back Bay and the now gentrified bow fronts of the South End. Not 20 minutes later, the bus would come to a stop in front of Boston Medical Center in one of the poorest census tracts in the entire United States. The streets were lined with the tents of the unhoused, while those struggling with opioid addiction moved up and down the sidewalks, attempting to ease their torment. Folks, no country, no government, no economy has ever been able to ensure that the benefits of capitalism take hold in every corner of their communities, even one that generates $23 trillion a year. Yet that is also our collective task ahead, from my backyard to yours, to ensure that the benefits of prosperity and growth touch every single soul across this great place. From a vibrant city center, past the falls in Shanko, the River Foyle, and through every corner of County Down, to be deliberate, to be intentional, to be impactful. So if there's a place on this planet that is resilient, that is capable, that is clear-eyed and scrappy enough to take on this challenge, it is the shores we stand on today. Because you all aren't afraid of the hard stuff. You have wrestled through hundreds of years of division, tribe and tradition, country and creed, pain, hurt, and loss. And you are still here. You are building a Northern Ireland where the troubles of the past give way to the triumphs of tomorrow, where children can read about history and not relive it. Children like Jack McBride from Donegal, who I met yesterday, right out back from this hall. He shared with me a piece that he wrote entitled GFA Poem. It concludes, but some still argue till this day if the agreement's truly sound, is it the beginning of a new era or just a Band-Aid that's bound? Regardless of the criticisms, we can all agree that the Good Friday Agreement was a step towards harmony. So let's raise a pint of Guinness to the Irish and the Brits who put aside their differences for a future that uplifts. Here's to the future that you have earned, a future that Jack and every child like him deserves. I am so excited and grateful to be along with you in this journey, and I cannot wait to see where we will go. Thank you so much.